You wanna add some balls to your gaming? Have you ever gamed and thought, man, I need more balls? Do you need some balls in your gaming? I'm excited because today we are going to unbox another weird gaming product. This is the Game Ball, what they tout to be the world's first gaming trackball. What does that mean? Does that just mean it's a bad trackball because gaming products kind of suck? Maybe. But let's start with just the unboxing. I actually kind of like the simplicity of this box. You gotta know when to roll them. Okay, game your way. This is not my way, but uh, I'll game your way today. Oh wow, they really recommend watching the quick start guide because they highlighted it. I'm actually a big fan of products that come like this. No BS, just cardboard, cardboard, paper, one plastic bag, which is fair because you want this to arrive like looking pretty pristine. You might wonder why would you use a trackball, not a mouse? There's a lot of reasons. There's actually a lot of people out there that use trackballs in their daily life, not mice. It's usually for like video editing or CAD. It's way better for reducing like RSI. Cause like you think about a mouse, you have to like really swing here. You're just like swinging this little ball around. And if you get good, you can have like a little DPI switch. So you can change your sensitivity. So you really don't have to work much. And for precision stuff, once you get used to it, it can actually be pretty amazing. It's actually great if you don't have a big desk. Do you think about a mouse? You really need a lot of inches. <laughs> I need a lot of inches. <laughs> the dorm room student, sure. Yeah, who has like a tiny little desk or you're someone who has not a lot of room in their place. Uh, this is actually a great way because it's stationary. You just move this. First thing that I do not like, although it's kind of fair, is the build quality of this cable. It's a kind of a cheap feeling plastic cable. And because it's a trackball, it's not really moving around. So it doesn't have to be as durable as a mouse, but I think when you're paying for like a, a gaming product, you're paying for aesthetics. And this is kind of a bit of a bummer. Before we actually go too much further, this is actually the special edition one, the black and red color. It seems to be sold out on their website. So let's also compare it to the regular one, the gray. Wow, this really doesn't, look gaming in any way, shape or form. <laughs> I love the the way that the finish is on these. You can see like there's like a glitter layer, but it's just below the kind of coating. So it has almost that car finish, which I think is a really attractive look. I think I like the red better, but I think the blue would probably hold up a little bit better to like fading and scratches. On the rest of the build of the mouse, I'm a little less impressed. This product is coming in at 148 US dollars. I almost think that it's unfortunate that it's gaming branded. Although it doesn't strike me as particularly gamey, except the like lobster tail shape. It's just a lobster. It says Game Ball, yeah. And I'm guessing there's a little bit of RGB going on, you know, for that, that gamer sh The wheel has ceramic bearings. It doesn't feel like it's as smooth as I want it to be. It's not bad. You rarely with a trackball are like, <laughs> Outside of that, there's these little touch bars, ambidextrous shape uh, and ambidextrous buttons, which is gonna be interesting. Uh, it's all customizable, which is great. It's got a Pixar optical sensor. It doesn't say which one that it is, so Pixar makes good sensors, so I'm not too, too worried. It's got Omron switches for the buttons. Again, they don't specify which ones. They come in high-end and low-end ones. I'm guessing it's somewhere uh, in the middle. It's fairly large which I find interesting. It's not a shape that I think will work for everyone. It actually doesn't feel great for me. This big palm rest is nice, but it also kind of forces your hand into one way. And I don't have the, I have like medium sized hands. It'd be better fit for big hands. If you had little hands, this would not work. It's about uh, 0.75 of a banana in length. The lobster tail is like 70% of the radius of the inner radius of the banana. The balls are about the size of I don't know, a small jawbreaker you could get for what used to be 25 cents. I don't even know what jawbreakers go for anymore. No. Uh, I can probably just, oh, it just comes out, okay, great. So we get a look inside, little trackball or the little ceramic bearings, which is nice. But then there's the optical sensor at the bottom, but at least it comes out really easily. It's e easier than even an old ball mouse where you have to like unscrew a thing and then pull it out. Uh, and it's also not touching the ground, so it's gonna get a little bit less dust than those would have tracked in. The plastic, it's kind of like that rubbery plastic feel. It's not bad. Um, it's not like top end quality. The buttons feel pretty good. I like the shapes quite a bit because it's very clear which one I'm about to press. There's good distinction and like even on the different parts of the button, it's very clear where my thumb is, where my fourth or like pinky finger would be. I think that's actually a very good design for six buttons all within reach. It has a thousand hertz polling rate, which is good any less 
I'd imagine is, is garbage. <laughs> it's the same as a mouse. They advertise that it's also fully capable as a daily trackball mouse. This probably wouldn't be your preferred choice just because I think that it's, unless you like the shape, there's other options out there. I have a weird thing. I don't think things branded as gaming are uh, generally better. Like there's some stuff, yes. Like you want a gaming monitor if you're playing like competitive games. You want the high refresh rate. You want the low pixel response times. You want like the clarity, the ULMB or the black insertion. You want the gaming features. Same with a mouse. You want thousand hertz polling rate. You want a great sensor. You want reliability. You want a good shape light. So like there is stuff where gaming matters, but I feel like a trackball I don't really know what it offers over another regular trackball other than like the shape. Underneath we have these anti-glide pads, in fact called rubber pads, where I just wanna test it, you know? I just wanna plug it in, you know? Like talk about what it's like when it's powered on, you know? Like our sponsor, Jackery. Thanks to Jackery for sponsoring this video. Their Explorer 1500 portable power station has enough juice to keep all your devices powered and connected. Its huge 1500 watt hour capacity and 1800 watt output rate allows up to seven devices plugged in simultaneously. It takes only four hours to recharge up from zero to 80%. Wow. Check out the Explorer 1500 at the link below and get 10% off with the code Linus Tech Tips. Okay, I need to figure out which buttons are which. Okay, that's right click or left click. This is definitely gonna be a bit of a struggle as I relearn the muscle memory. This is a, it's a good trackball, it's smooth. People who use trackballs, this section might be boring to you because you're like, yeah, I use a trackball, I fucking know what I'm doing. This is for you other people like me who use mice. Oh, okay, this, that is really telling of what I think where I'm on a laptop, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go control and get to my tab that my first instinct was to get off of the game ball and go to the trackpad, which I hate. So that tells you a little bit of my per my immediate reaction. That being said, that's not fair because with things like this that are such a departure from what you're used to, you just have to get used to it. There's gonna be an awkward learning period. Oh, it's it's a stone po You've used trackballs before, right? For like cat and stuff? It's right? a game ball. It's a game ball. Yeah, it's specifically targeted as the world's first gaming trackball, which I think is a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this spin out. Oh yeah. It's, it, it goes everywhere when you go fast. Yeah. <laughs> I could see why you'd want this on like a plane. Yeah, I think you're kind of, we're coming to the issue is, it's hard to see why you would want it for gaming. I want to see, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna figure this out together. You actually can't see it unless I turn it sideways, but there's actually RGB kind of shining through the cracks in the button. That's what they're gonna say, they're gonna say on my on my tombstone. Had RGB shining through his crack. <laughs> you know what, I threw this away, but as this is a product that I'm not super familiar with, let's uh... RTFM. RTFM! Yeah, I generally must. Okay, these are my scrolls. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I could see this being a problem. So these little like capacitive, pads or whatever, that's your scroll. One is horizontal, one is vertical. I don't love DPI clutches on mice where you just hit the button and it switches between like one mode and another, like a sniper mode. You go from regular sensitivity to really low sensitivity for those fine fine things. But I actually could see a use on this trackball. Let's watch this video. David reacts, baby. Oh my God, it's 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Quick start needs to be at most 10 minutes, but it should be like four minutes and 30 seconds. Okay, so it's showing me all the stuff, showing me how to clean it. Oh, you can change like the acceleration. That's cool. We ain't gonna do that today. We going default, baby, we going raw. I've been a little bit hard on this as a gaming product. I think there is games that could, could use it. Strategy games, uh, real-time strategy games. So you know, anything that's a little more casual, it doesn't require quick reflexes and precision but I want to find out for myself. Let's go, buddy. I think it's interesting, Jono, that you got me a cheap mouse to compare with a $150 product. With the cheap mouse versus this, we'll see, it's gonna be a little bit closer. <laughs> this mouse isn't particularly great, but it's, it's doing what I want, you know, my brain and my hand are communicating, they're working well together. All right, that's just like a little warm up. I probably could do better if I, if I played it again, but I'm very curious as to how this mother lover feels. Let's go, game ball. Are you turning on? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> Come on, hit him. For fuck's sake. Oh my God. 
Okay, 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 okay. But the problem I'm feeling, and it might just be because I'm getting used to it, my hand is so fucking tense right now. I'm like hard as a friggin' board, and I'm like trying to get like these tiny little minute changes. Yeah, I feel like okay, maybe low DPI is the way. The high DPI is definitely not the way. Ooh, kind of, okay. I definitely can see that it's mostly my inexperience. I've got to get used to it. I don't even think if I use this for a thousand hours, I would be better than I am with a mouse. One thing that I'm finding, having used it, the joint that you're using with the trackball, which is kind of this knuckle side to side, that's not something humans generally have a lot of precision or articulation with. I think, in general, my wrist, hand, and kind of arm, I'm more used to having it be ex an expression, a natural connection from my brain to my hand. That is definitely a, I'm used to this thing, but I don't think that this is the best joint for like gaming. I'd be interested to see you trackball users if you think that you could get really good at gaming. I think your thumb's probably better. I'd be kind of curious. I can I can immediately feel my tension in my shoulder. Like I, like as soon as I'm using my thumb, I can feel the muscle just like all the way up. The more I'm using it, the more I like it. This is immediately a better experience. It's like yeah, I'm selecting these things. I, this is fine to play with a mouse, but I could absolutely see wanting to play this entire game with a trackball. The experience with a game like XCOM immediately sells me more on this product. An interesting question is, is this a good supplementary accessory to your current setup? Is it something that if you do a lot of productivity work, you could have in addition to a mouse? I think it actually would be a great thing. It's not cheap, 150 US dollars. Like that's a, a lot of money for an additional accessory. I do think this has a place in a lot of people's gaming setups. A lot of people's setups. Some people's gaming setups, maybe. If you're a big RTS person, and again, you're, you're feeling that RSI, and it's cool to support smaller companies, upstarts, I think that's neat. Can I give it an unbridled recommendation? No. Is it worth checking out? Yeah, for sure. Check it out at the link in the description below. I think it's it's not a bad time. Thank you so much for watching this short circuit. If you wanna watch more mouse and other gaming products, you can click anywhere you want on your screen. <laughs> Don't do that. Click on the ball. Here it is. Go get the ball. Go get the ball. <laughs>